I'm Suzette Mondoir. Passmore's is an outstanding school and it's in what is designated as a socially deprived area. My role is aimed at looking at that middle area of, of invisible students, your CD borderline, your ones in the middle band that just sort of tick along and don't really flag up for any particular reason. What was Passmore's like before the coaching? Passmore's has always had a brilliant atmosphere to work in. It, it's a very teamwork orientated place. I think the coaching has developed in what we already had within Passmore's, yeah. which was already really good. Mm. It's helped us enhance that even more. What's it like now? There's a lot more connections between departments. Staff have built relationships that, that they wouldn't have had the time or the opportunity to build before. It breaks down those, those barriers that are sometimes there. What made you want to get involved with our coaching programme? I really got such a sense that this was just the way to move forward, not to be stuck in a position, maybe you know, talking over or around the same stuff again and again and again, but to actually have something that practically works on a day-to-day -day basis to move forward. It was really good fun. It broke down a lot of barrier and you really got to see other members of staff, including senior staff, as just the people they are. Yeah. Um, and that was brilliant. It's quite challenging at times. It does take you out of your comfort zone. But it's just brilliant. How have you then used that in school? Now the team name has changed and our focus has changed. Not with the students we work with or, or our actual initial remit, but in our approach. Mm -hmm. And also in our outcomes. Yeah. Because what we're not doing is telling the kids over and over and over again what they already know. They know if they're underachieving, they know if they're falling behind, they know if they're getting homework detention, they're getting nagged and told all around. And to be able to sit with a student and ask them questions and listen to them does take them off guard a little bit and they really like that sense of what they achieved, they own, they've done it, they've said it. They've committed to it and they've followed through with it. And then to, to catch up with them a while later, and you can really see how they built upon that for themselves, is it, it's just fantastic. And the more students are coached, the more it's it becomes the norm. And it's think accepted and then it's valued. Within the school, it's very much part of our, our well-being, which is very high on Parsonal's agenda. <laughs> All new staff needs to offer a code purely for them to work through, any you know, really. Organisation, time management, work-life balance, meeting deadlines, planning. Now we'll look with them then to see if we'll help them to find some strategies that work for them so that we're addressing the, that before it actually becomes an issue for them. Brilliant. So how do you select them? Some of it's data mm -hmm. because we do look um, in that middle band of students, ones that are underachieved. Staff referrals. I mean, increasingly, we're getting more of our self referrals where they just go, Oh, Miss, so and so is having coaching. Can I come along for that? Um, what sorts of results have you and your fellow coaching champions got from actually using the coaching system? So we have evaluation sheets that at the end of a set of um, coaching sessions, we ask coaches to, to fill out anonymously about the benefits that they've received. And I will then send them out um, one about a term after one to see if those benefits have been sustained and if they've built on them and generally they have rather than just go to somebody and, and ask for an answer to a question or ask for something to be resolved or say well how do I do this what do I do about that mm. are more likely to and to look at different things and and to self coach before they go to somebody else wanting to be given that answer mm -hmm. um, and being able to work within their teams in a more effective way and certainly within lessons in, in the questioning and the techniques that are used in plenaries that, that that's I mean certainly the coaching ethos is developing and growing and we've got more and more staff that are thinking that uh, there's something going on and they want to be part of it rather than thinking, oh, I haven't got time for that. It's becoming more the norm. Everybody wants to be a part of it. That most staff within school are aware of somebody that has been coached or is a coach mm -hmm. and is starting to see the impacts of that. And also a lot of staff are really happy to talk about it, very open talking about the coaching they've received. And they're starting to see it for themselves and see the differences it's making, so they want to be part of that as well. How did the impact that you've achieved actually compare with what you'd originally hoped for? Oh my goodness, it's completely exceeded all of my personal expectations mm -hmm. and the expectations that the school had. It's 
becomes so much part of us and, and what we are and what we do and how we support ourselves and each other and therefore the community you know within the school. What would you say your biggest success story is? Keeping the momentum going and being able to keep it high enough on people's agendas on you know so they're aware of the changes the developments the opportunities what's open for them what's available to them and that it's becoming more than all this is how we are we have a coaching ethos and now that's what Passmos is about I think that's been the biggest, biggest success and much more than I ever expected it to be good so how have you done it one of the key things is that from the top down from the head teacher at Passmos coaching is brought into that he wanted coaching he wanted all new staff to have a coach and all newly, newly promoted staff to have as a coach and the fact that within Passmore's it's not about hierarchy it's not about line management because it's about that individual it, it's not about top down at all mm. and leading by example he asked me to be his coach which I have been ever since that very much set the standard for us that was the benchmark is yeah. that you know head teacher co-educator coaching works because I can't guess his answers and second guess them I can only work as his coach and that does work obviously Vic brought it in and you struggled to sustain it yeah. didn't you at that point just tell us what happened there uh, yeah, we did really. I mean, there was there was a really good amount of buy-in. There was a lot of enthusiasm and interest in the beginning, um, but there was nobody to to oversee that. There was nobody to to hold it together, to coordinate it, because Vic didn't have the capacity. And so, probably within a, two terms at the most, it, it had kind of fizzled out. So and that was a real eye-opener that it needs more to sustain it and keep it growing and keeping it moving forward. So then me being the coaching project manager holding the overview of what the coaches are doing, their capacity, who's coaching whom, what's going on, keeping staff and coaches aware of updates, changes and all sorts of things like that. I think that's been a key part. And I know that Vic's also encouraged you to do things like going out of school for your coaching, which is great. Yeah, absolutely, he does. And, and that's another area of where it's really valued. A coach and a coachee can book time out and go out of school, off the premises, go to a coffee shop, wherever, and just have that time out to be able to switch the work head off. And that really makes the quality of it so much more and the coachee gets get so much more from it and staff are allowed to protect their PPA and non-contact time for that so they can't be used for cover if they've got a coaching session they put it down and that's protected. Brilliant. What sorts of challenges or priorities do you think it's helped pass Mars with? There's been a lot of changes. We're moving to a new building very shortly. We're changing to academy status. But there's the feeling of security within staff that if if they feel they're struggling with something, or something's bothering them, or they're worrying about something, they've got somewhere they can go with it. It's about them and it's for them. For anybody in any area, if they're part of Passmore's community, can access coaching. And that's certainly comments I get time and time again about how lucky we are here to have this, that, that Vic has brought this in for us. And it's, it's really valued and, and staff are always just just so grateful you know that, that actually we've had the opportunity and this is here for us that a lot more staff feel empowered now they're sort of taking the reins a bit more what's amazing with kids is when the ones that have really realized that they've got ownership and control over this I've seen a young man turn his homework detentions around from nine ten a term he's made that zero this term but he's had knock-on effects like he's gone to a particular teacher and asked to move in a class and i think once once they start getting a win and they realize it's theirs they've done it they've achieved it they want more of it yeah, and they, they need that experience rather than being told they can do it for them actually through the coaching to be able to find their way of of having that experience for themselves and knowing that that they've done it. I mean, it's amazing looking at the initial and final self-assessment sheets for them as well. That is so powerful because they've done the initial sheet and then they do one at the end and they're like, 
Wow. And they really get a sense of, of what they've done and how far they've moved. Wow. So, and that's just over six weeks of working through the toolkit, yeah? Yeah. You know, things that like this slipping again, we can pick them up again. But quite often students will come back to us, actually. They'll come back and say, Miss, this isn't working. Oh, I'm really struggling with this. Can can I meet up with you? And, and when they're willing to do that in their time, in their break or their lunch or, or after school, you know it's something that they really value and they want to do it for themselves. What do you reckon would have happened if you hadn't invested in the coaching programme? With my team's role as progress mentor, I don't know where we would have gone. We would have just kept on doing what we were doing, but we needed extra tools. We needed something else to be able to work with. Coaching gives us a whole extra set of skills and a whole different way to, to help them move forward. Um, and I certainly think that working with some students that are a bit disengaged with their own learning, I don't know if I could have got the same result done if I was purely just mentoring them as I would have been before the coaching training. So if you could sum up the programme in three words, what would they be? Exciting, empowering 